Hello, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Pareto, and I will be conducting your lesson for this Monday, April 13th. We're going to be going over some themes in Of Mice and Men, and I'll be going over your assignment and giving you an example of those. So, before further ado, let's get started. All right. So, here is your lesson for today. We're going to be going over of mice and men and what themes and what characters might be attached to those themes. So here's what we're going to be doing. First off, here are your objectives for what our lesson will cover today. First, I'm going to review the 10 themes that are present in of mice and men by John Steinbeck. There are probably more than 10, but these are the top 10 that we decided on as a group of teachers to, to show to you guys. Okay, I'll give you a short explanation of each of the themes that we chose. Then I'm going to introduce the theme slash character chart assignment that will be posted to your Google Classroom today. In your Google Meets or Zoom meetings today with your regular normal teachers, you are be going over guided practice over how to fill out this chart over maybe two or three of the other themes that I'm not going to give you as an example. Okay. And finally, I am going to give you an example, walk you through an example of filling out this chart and looking at the themes in this book and the themes that we chose. I'm going to choose one theme and go over it with you. Uh, I will show you how to use paraphrasing as your evidence as opposed to a direct quote. Most of the time when you guys are asked to give us evidence, you go directly into the text and give me a quote from the text. Well, this and this time, I'm going to use paraphrasing of a scene as opposed to a direct quote from the scene. So stay tuned to find out which one that I go over, okay? So first off, first theme, loneliness. If you've read this book, you understand that a lot of the characters in this book are lonely, but they're lonely for different reasons. We're not talking about loneliness like in I need a boyfriend or girlfriend type loneliness. We're talking about isolation type loneliness, true loneliness, okay? So some of our characters are lonely because of physical isolation. They're actually separated from the rest of the group. Uh, social isolation. Some characters are not socially accepted in groups, which leads to their loneliness. And emotional isolation. Some might be around a whole group of people and accepted, and yet there's no emotional outlet for them to come in and out of or use for re recourse or reproof, okay? So which characters fit which of these categories or multiple categories to show that they're lonely in the novel? Steinbeck wants to address loneliness and the effects of loneliness in this novel, okay? Our second theme, marginalization and oppression. Which characters are marginalized or oppressed and why or how, okay? So marginalization means they are groups that are kept out of the power struggle. They're made to be less than other groups, okay? They're marginalized. Uh, people who are kept apart from society for whatever reason. They are kept out of the power structure or kept out of society as in like shunned or kept apart, okay? And the groups of people who are kept in their place by society. Think of the idea of they know their place. This is their proper place, okay? So think about that. Steinbeck talks a lot or uses a lot of marginalization in, in this novel. Uh, friendship and loyalty is our next theme. Which characters have bonds of friendship or exhibit loyalty to one another? Okay, so let's talk about what that is. Friendship and loyalty. Friendship, who actually cares about each other? Which of these characters actually care about other characters? Uh, which characters try to protect other characters? Okay, uh, which characters are honest to other characters in the story? Uh, honesty is not just maybe outright telling them a lie, but being deceptive in one way or another, okay? Um, put someone else's needs before their own. Are there characters in this book that truly 
try to be friends by putting other people's needs before theirs. Okay, and what does that say about those characters? What is Steinbeck trying to tell us about friendship and loyalty in this book? Okay, next up, racism. Which characters are racist in your opinion? Does racism set a power structure in this book? Okay, so first, what signs of racism are present? What do you see that is racist in this book? Of course, Crooks is the only African-American character, the only black guy in the novel. So he's going to be centered around the racism. So which characters in this novel treat Crooks, treat Crooks badly as opposed to treating him well, okay, or as an equal? Think about those characters. And what effect does that have both on Crooks and on the other characters, okay? So racism do, is a double-edged sword. It doesn't just affect the person who is being, is the object of the racism. It also affects those who are doing the racist things, okay? So think about that in this novel. What kinds of things are put upon crooks? What kinds of things does that, does that affect? What kinds of racism does he undergo? And how does that both affect him and the people around him, okay? Sexism. Which characters are sexist? Does sexism set a power, a power structure? Okay. What signs of sexism are present, just like in racism? And of course, since it's the only girl that is present or woman who is present in the novel, is it significant that Curly's wife never has a name of her own? She's always referred to as Curly's wife. We never know what her real name is. We know more about characters, the other girl characters. We at least know their first names, like Aunt Clara and Susie from Susie's Place. But for some reason, Curly's wife, who is the one that we actually see in the novel, is never given a name. So think about how that affects her and affects her situation and us as a reader. What effect does this sexism have both on Curly's wife, on the people around her, on the men, and the situation in society as a whole. Okay, so think about those things. Uh, next up, use of authority, abuse versus fairness. So which characters are authorities in this novel? Which characters have power over other characters? What does abuse cause versus the fair use of that power? Okay, so what is power? It is basically being able to hold sway over somebody else or some situation, okay? So does it matter who has the power? In this novel, does the fact that certain characters have more power than others change what might have happened or what does happen? How do people use their power? Do they promote themselves or do they try to help others? Which characters use it which way, okay? And which character or characters use their power well versus poorly, okay? So think about those things what characters use their power, what characters have power, and how they use them, okay? And what is Steinbeck trying to tell us about the use of power and the correct use of power? Uh, dreams and hope. What is the importance of having hope or pursuing your dreams? Big, big theme in this novel, okay? Which characters have dreams or hopes for the future, okay? How are those dreams regarded by others? Are they accepted? Are they ridiculed? Uh, does that affect how they feel about their dreams? Or the, the idea of where, whether or not their dreams can be accomplished? Okay. Do dreams or hopes set those characters apart from the other characters? Does it give them something that the other characters who don't have hope or dreams that they don't have? Does it give them something that those other characters don't have? Okay, think about those things. All right, mercy versus violence. Is mercy the absence of violence? Is violence necessary for mercy to take place? Okay, so think about that, the difference between mercy versus violence in this novel. Okay, which characters exhibit mercy? Which characters are nice and try to help and, and you know, help those who are downtrodden as opposed to which characters are prone to violence. 
who use that situation for their own benefit and violent reasons, okay? Do mercy and violence ever overlap in this novel? Can violence or the perception of violence be merciful? Does that take place in this novel? Okay, think about those ideas. Next up, the dignity of life. What is basic human dignity? Okay, so think about what it means to have dignity. First, is everyone worthy of being respected? Is everybody who is alive worthy of having respect? Okay. Does Steinbeck address that in this novel? Does everyone have a sense of honor? Does everybody in their dignity have the idea of honor in their character? Even if it's not the kind of honor you might think it is, do they think in one honorable way or another? Okay, and finally, what happens when people aren't treated with personal dignity? What happens when people are not treated with honor and respect. Are there characters that are not treated with honor or respect? What does Steinbeck try to tell us about those characters and about those situations, okay? And lastly, innocence. What does it mean to be innocent? And we're not talking about innocent or guilty like in a courtroom. We're talking about naivety or the lack of intent, being an innocent in the world being somebody who should be protected as opposed to someone who is evil, okay? So which characters portray a trait of innocence, okay? This idea of overarching, has no, not a mean bone in his body, but, or her body, but is innocent to the world, okay? Is innocence simply a lack of intent? Is it simply, I didn't mean to do that, so I'm not a bad person because I did it, okay? Does the lack of intent mean what innocence is? And finally, is innocence a good thing or a bad thing? Is having that childlike nature a good thing in certain situations? Is it a bad thing? What does Steinbeck try to tell us about innocence and our characters and our innocence as people. What happens to that innocence, okay, as we get older? All right, here is the chart that is going to be your assignment, okay? Now, as I said before, I'm going to show you an example from one of these charts. Uh, here is what you're going to be filling out. First, each of the themes is listed over here on the left, and you will place in the center bracket a character that exemplifies that means like a character that has that trait or is the best version of that trait so what character or characters exemplify loneliness which characters are the most lonely in this novel uh, marginalization which characters are the ones that are pushed aside the most in this novel okay you'll put those things in the center okay and then on the right side you're going to add your evidence that shows or that proves or that gives us an idea why that character is connected to that theme of loneliness or that theme of marginalization or sexism or hopes and dreams or dignity or whatever, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example. And my example I'm going to use is the use of authority versus fairness. Uh, the use of authority, cruelty or abuse of authority versus fairness, okay? All right, so here's your chart, okay? All of these things are what you're gonna be doing, okay? So here's my example, and this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna put Curly as one example of power or the use of power, and I'm gonna put him down as abusive or the abuse of power, okay? And Slim, it's going to be my other example. Now you're not gonna to have to do more than one character for the rest, but I'm gonna show you how this good power versus bad power works. And I'm gonna put him down as fairness, okay? Now, over in this slot, okay, I'm gonna start with Curly. <clears throat> and we're gonna look at, and I'm just gonna put some bullet points here for you guys. 
Okay, so this time I'm going to use paraphrasing as examples. I'm not going to use what I just showed you guys as in how they were described, but I'm going to use a paraphrase of a scene of what happened in the scene. Okay, so look at how curly is. Okay, the scene I'm going to go into is the scene between Curly, right before Curly gets in a fight with Winnie, okay? So, he is going to talk to Slim about his wife, okay? He doesn't get anywhere with Slim, so what does he do? He has to save face. His only power is he knows that he's pretty good with his hands and he's the boss's son. So what does he do? He scans the room and picks a fight with Lenny. Okay? And starts punching him because he thinks he's laughing at him, right? But it's really to save, save face over Slim. So he picks a fight with Lenny. Now why does he pick a fight with Lenny? Yes, Lenny's a big guy and he wants to show himself out over the big guy, but it's more than that. Carlson's described as a pretty big guy, and he even insults um, Curly before Curly picks the fight with Lenny, okay? The reason he picks a fight for, with Lenny is he can't lose the fight, okay? In his mind, he can't lose the fight, so think about it, okay? Picks the fight with Lenny because Lenny's a big guy, and if he wins, if Curly wins, he is seen as tough. Okay? If he loses, then Lenny shouldn't have picked on him. Okay, so that's what's going through his cold calculating mind, okay? I can't lose this fight and I can save face. Now let's look at Slim, okay? Slim, just after this, uses his authority as well, but he uses it in a fair way, okay? So Curly's using his authority to intimidate. He's using his authority to make himself save face, okay? Curly, on the other hand, uses his authority right after the fight. So what does he do? He He's asked by George if they are going to be fired. Okay? He just crushed the hand of the of the um, Boss's son, why wouldn't they be fired? So how does Slim do? Slim doesn't think about himself. He thinks about his two co-workers. So Slim threatens Curly. How does he threaten Curly? He tells them, he tells Curly, I'll make sure, this is again paraphrasing, make sure the truth comes out about the fight comes out if you try to fire them. Okay, now what that means is Curly will then be, be thought of as a coward. So he will lose the fight then, okay? So Slim, using fairness, now why is this fair? Why would I call this fair? He's threatening another guy, right? Well, it's fair because Curly picked the fight. In Slim's mind, the others, the ones who defended themselves, you know, Lenny, Lenny shouldn't pay for defending himself. let alone George, okay? So, what you're gonna do in your guided practice, and that's basically what you're gonna do for these. Now, they don't have to be as long or as involved as I just went through, 
but I wanted to go and kind of give you an overall idea of one of the tougher ones to do, okay? So what you're gonna do with your teachers or, uh, today in your Zoom meetings is you will do a couple of more of these as examples together, kind of in a work group uh, to see how you're gonna do the rest of these. And then when you're done with that, you will fill out five or six of the other ones. And this is gonna prepare you for your writing you're gonna be doing on Wednesday, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing real quick and kind of wrap this video up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your teachers in your Zoom sessions today. I hope this made a little bit of sense. And if you're one of my students, I'll see you at either 11, one or three uh, today or 11 and three on Tuesday. Hope you guys have a good week. Talk to you later.